Today, I am starting a new series, ultra rare, rare, and signed Harry Potter books in my collection. Today, we start with ultra rare. Hey Harry Potter fans, Peter Kenneth here. Welcome back to the Potter Collector channel where we are a community of collectors. There are one, two, three, four, seven books in my collection that I would consider ultra rare. Now, there are signed books in my collection that are ultra rare, but they're ultra rare because of the signature in the book or because the book is signed. The book itself may not actually be ultra rare or even rare, um, but because it's signed, um, it makes it ultra rare. So I'm taking all the signed books out of the ultra rare video and putting all of them into just one signed video. So you're not gonna see any signed books today. You will see one translation. I'm going to show and talk about the books in the order of which they were printed. The first ultra rare book in my collection is this gorgeous uncorrected proof of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Uncorrected proofs are sent out three to six months prior to a book being released to the general public. And they are sent to reviewers or journalists, editors, to, to write articles on the book or to check the book. And that is true with Philosopher's Stone as well. This was sent out early 1997. This book here is the very first book Harry Potter was ever printed in, the entire story was ever printed in. I'm not gonna talk too much about this book. I did already do a YouTube video about it. You can check out, uh, there's a link popping up somewhere, one of these sides. I can never remember which side it pops up on. Very quick run through, it says uncorrected proof at the top, on the back, it has some publishing information. One of the interesting things about this book is on the title page. The book is credited to J.A. Rowling. This is because Joanne Rowling does not have a middle name. And the publishers wanted her to use initials because they didn't think that boys would like to read Harry Potter if they knew it was written by a woman. So she took her grandmother's name as her middle initial, Kathleen. Joanne Kathleen Rowling. But when the inside of the book was being printed, J.K. Rowling had not settled on that middle initial yet. So they put the first letter of the alphabet in as a placeholder. The inside of this book matches that of the first printing, so the same errors that we find in a first printing are also inside of the uncorrected proof. There were 200 of these uncorrected proofs printed and sent out, making this one of the rarest Harry Potter books in existence. One thing I want to mention about handling books, the correct way to handle a book is with clean and thoroughly dried hands. Don't use gloves because with gloves you may be handling the book, you may not feel that you are accidentally dog-earing a page because the gloves are in the way. So it's best to not use gloves when handling books. Just make sure your hands are really clean and really dry. Next up is what many consider the holy grail of Harry Potter books. The first edition, first printing of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, the hardcover edition. 500 of these books were printed alongside the paperback, which had 5,150 copies. You'll see that in the rare video. 300 of these books were sent to libraries, and the additional 200 were sent and sold in bookstores. This happens to be one of the copies that was sold in a bookstore. So this is kind of one of 200, but not really. I have also done a video on this book, so you can check it out up here. Two days after they printed the first printing of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, they printed the second printing. 1,000 copies. There are some errors that they had found in the first printing that they fixed in the second printing, and most of these went to bookstores to be sold. Now here's the thing about the second printing that no one knows. There were 1,500 copies total between the first printing and the second printing. It's quite possible that they found the errors in the first printing stopped the print run altogether and started a whole new printing, so the second printing. Because there were only two days between print runs, it's quite possible that they had planned for 15 Hundred copies. Nobody knows Bloomsbury's plan for sure, however, we do know that there were 500 first printing copies and 1,000 second printing copies printed. Three of the last four books are uncorrected proofs. This is the uncorrected proof of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Again, they were sent out to reviewers, editors, journalists. There were 250 copies of Chamber of Secrets printed, so 50 more than Philosopher's Stone. There's a few errors in here, the same errors that you'll find in 
Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. It's pretty much the same book, but uh, the uncorrected proof version of it. On the back is some printing information. One of the interesting things about the Chamber of Secrets proof, some of them were the first to be issued with a test dust jacket or a trial dust jacket. So a proof of what the dust jacket would look like. I'm going to talk more about this in a future video, so I won't go in depth on it just yet, but there are some changes that you're probably noticing right now just looking at this. There are some changes from this one to the final. Now, if you know about proofs, you're probably saying, Peter, you are way wrong. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone was also issued with a trial dust jacket. You're right, but you're also wrong. The jacket that came with the uncredited proof of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone was actually test wrappers for the covers of the soft cover of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone because the hardcover was issued without a dust jacket. The first and second printing of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone hardcover were issued without a dust jacket. Now, I don't have one of those test wrappers of Philosopher's Stone, um, but I will use a book as an example. The test wrappers are made of the same material or a little bit thinner since they're kind of a, a proof of the, the cardstock that they use for a soft cover of a Harry Potter book. Unlike a dust jacket, it also does not have these inside flaps. So because the Philosopher's Stone Uncorrected Proof did not have any artwork printed on it, they wanted an example of what the final book would look like. So they made a test wrapper that you could put on top of the Uncorrected Proof to kind of give you an idea of what the book would look like after it was printed. Next up is an uncorrected proof of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Prisoner of Azkaban is the last book that they printed in uncorrected proof form to send out because Harry Potter had blown up all around the world and they needed to protect the story for Goblet of Fire and all future books. On the back we see that publishing information. There are a few interesting things in this uncorrected proof that I have discovered. Um, first on the copyright page, Credit is made to Joanne Rowling as it is in the first printing, first state of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. However, in the first printing, first state of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, on page seven, we find an error that was fixed on the second state where the paragraph had dropped after the word burnt. They fixed this um, in the second state. But in the uncorrected proof on that same page, that same paragraph, there is no dropped text and the word is written as burned, not burnt. This is also true for the green or second state Prisoner of Azkaban proof. Yep, there's a second one. Another very interesting thing about the purple uncorrected proof is towards the back, there are these X's where there should be words. So for example, I'll read a little little piece from this. How cool is that? I'm reading a piece from an uncorrected proof of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, an easy mistake to make, said Dumbledore softly. I expect XXXXX of hearing it, but you do look extraordinarily like James, except XXX eyes. So, except for your eyes, um, is like replaced with a bunch of X's. So I don't know if that's like a spacing error thing, or there was something with the computer that put a bunch of X's in it. If you know why they would do that, please leave a comment below, I would love to learn. I know a lot about Harry Potter books, but I don't know everything there is to know about Harry Potter books. Now, before I get to the green uncorrected proof, you may be wondering to yourself, did Prisoner of Azkaban come with a trial or dust jacket? And yes, one was printed, however, the books were not ever issued with one. This trial dust jacket was found by my very good friend Carly at All the Pretty Books. She and I co-owned this beautiful piece together. This is a trial dust jacket for Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This is the only known example in a private collection in the world. I'm sure that they printed more, however, this is the only one that has ever shown its face. And there are some errors again, like the, the uh, Chamber of Secrets trial dust jacket. There are some errors that were fixed in the, the final. A lot of color changes actually. This, this was changed to black. This actually mimics the Philosopher's Stone dust jacket coloring, but they ended up changing the color scheme quite a bit on the final. But again, I will do a video specifically on this as well as the Chamber of Secrets dust jacket, both of which Carly and I own together. Next up is that green uncorrected proof 
There's the purple and there's the green. The green was issued later because there are some errors that were fixed in the green that don't show in the purple. The green proof is the second state because some of the errors that were found in the purple proof have been fixed. For example, the X's in the back and actually the text block has changed by almost a whole page. So what was on 310 is now on 311. An easy mistake to make, said Dumbledore softly. I expect you're tired of hearing it, but you do look extraordinarily like James, except for your eyes. You have your mother's eyes. So that is fixed on the green uncorrected proof of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban but that whole page change may be because they added a page of storyline to the green proof, which may be why they issued a second proof to begin with, or, or a page that may have been missing when they first printed this. Nobody knows. It's been confirmed by Bloomsbury that 150 copies of each were printed, so 300 total of both of them. So they increased the uncorrected proof print count by 50 each book. So there were 200 of Philosopher's Stone, 250 of Chamber of Secrets, and 300 of the green and purple proof combined of Prisoner of Azkaban. I didn't want to take Astorian out of the case here, um, but this is Astorian. This is one of 700 copies. This is the rarest known translation. We don't have uh, print numbers of all of the translations. However, this is the one that we do know, and there were 700 copies, making it almost as rare as the first printing hardcover of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I hope that you enjoyed this video and learning about ultra rare Harry Potter books. If you have any questions about what you saw in this video or Harry Potter books, Harry Potter book collecting, please leave a comment below. I am going to try to get back to as many of you as possible. Next week will be rare Harry Potter books. Now it's time to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, keep collecting. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, welcome. You can subscribe right up here. You can also look at some previously posted content down here. If you have any questions about Harry Potter books or collecting, please feel free to contact me. I'm always happy to help. But for now, I must go. See you next time. Whoa, where'd he go?